Hello tutors, sorry about that. <laughs> nothing, nothing like the start of a video where you uh, you drop the camera. <laughs> right, let's start that again. Hello tubesters, <laughs> welcome to another one of Gav's videos. Let's get a bit closer, otherwise this guy looks like he's an 18mm figure. Uh, right, this is the... It's quite aware of, oh, I'm so prepared as usual. He won't any, look anything like this guy <laughs> by the time I finish painting him, but that's what he's supposed to look like. And it's from FER, uh, Officer 93rd Regiment, Southern Highlanders, 1854. So we're talking Crimean War, uh, the Battle of Balaclava, really. Uh, the Thin Red Line, if you uh, remember that. Uh, that was when the 90, 93rd uh, stopped, uh, more or less, in its tracks. Some, some uh, I don't know if it was a brigade or a rush, or uh, I doubt it was a division, but it could have been. Uh, but a lot of Russian cavalry anyway. They were going to raid uh, the port of Balaclava and uh, Sir Colin Campbell came forward with uh, with the 93rd and in two, uh, had them in uh, two lines and they volley fired and, and a lot of it was also probably down to the inept way in which the uh, the Russian cavalry were, were being uh, operated at a higher level. Uh, there was ineptness going all over the crime area, it wasn't just a British thing. Uh, and um, because ordinarily you wouldn't have thought two, two uh, like they weren't in square or anything, uh, two lines of, uh, of infantry uh, w wouldn't normally be able to hold off that amount of cavalry, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, let's get that out of the way anyway. Nice bit of a historical context. Right guys, uh, as usual, lights bleaching out everything that I've done on it. Uh, which um, by that I mean I've put some pre-shading of uh, on a grey base. We've got the usual black and white on there, and it's all <laughs> it's it just looks like white. But there is there is as you can just about see some pre-shading going on in there. I've uh, the reason I also wanted to do it. I decided in the end I did a, this. Hopefully I'll remember to put the actual video, the unboxing video. Right, let's get this back so you can see all the figure. Uh, if you do remember the figure when I unboxed it, the sword uh, was this. Uh, completely bent out of shape, no amount of hot water, hair drying, uh, leaving it pressed under weight, nothing. It just kept falling back to its, uh, its, its bendy shape. So I cut that off. And I've replaced it with a plaster card. I, you know, scribed a, a groove down it with the um, panel line scriber. I can't give you the thickness, but uh, it's probably very slightly thicker than the other one. Uh, sanded, sanded the edges down, and uh, it's not absolutely perfect, obviously, but uh, I think that does the job quite well. He has it resting on its arm. I just cut the the tang of the the sword, so that's the bit that goes into the, the to the hilt of the sword. Uh, obviously, I just cut off at the the base of the hilt, and uh, I made it into roughly a T. You know, if you think the the the, the main base of a T, uh, I cut it off like that and uh, drilled drilled a small hole out, then opened a slot very slightly for the rest of the sword to so just sit in with some super glue. So uh, yeah, he's uh, it's a bit bouncy at the moment because I'll I'll shorten this this wire afterwards. It's mainly that length for spraying. But a beautiful figure, really really lovely face. Um, you know, uh, I'm, <laughs> you know, it's taking a bit of time to get this one up just because you keep looking at the tartan and thinking, oh my life, what have I done? So I think what I'll probably do with this, uh, I'm going to have a go with the oils again, uh, just to see what the oils work out on a on a figure this scale. Um, but I will probably do the kilt first. Uh, he's not got a plaid, so he hasn't got the shawl that goes out. Well, it's all one piece, but uh, obviously the plaid goes over the shoulder. Uh, he's just got the sash and the short kilt, so that's something. Uh, you know, it's just front and back. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the only thing I've seen is, and I'll put my thumb underneath it, that they're roughly just about the same size, but uh, I've got the scabbard dragging on the floor a bit, maybe if I'd have angled it. I went with sticking the whole figure together. I'm not a huge fan of, of 
heads and arms separate because you've got to handle the arms to get them in. You know, it's, I just I just think uh, it, it works better for me. Uh, to, to yes, it's more it's hard work for yourself getting in all the nooks and crannies, but it just works better to me as a whole figure. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's uh, what, what do we say? We'll call this. We'll, call it, we'll go under the title. I think from now on, I'll do display painting and busts. Uh, something you know, like I did with other one, whatever I gave that title, and then uh, in brackets I'll put uh, you know, Crimean officer or whatever. Um, so next time you see him, hopefully he'll have his acrylic base coats on. So uh, again, you know, Vallejos, Andreas, whatever scale seventy fives, whatever I put on as a, as a base layer, and then we'll try some oils on top. So keep an eye out for this one. He will be coming to a video sometime soon. Okay. Guys, you take care of yourselves, and we will catch each other very soon on another video. Cheers.